Hi everyone, and welcome to my guitar rig rundown. Um, we're going to go in kind of like chronological order of whatever, how I've acquired these. This wasn't my first bass that I ever had. The first bass I ever owned I got when I was I was about 10 or 11. And the, it was a Washburn XB100, and it was bigger than me. Um, and I really struggled to get my, my hands around it um, at first. So my dad picked this up for me. I got it because I absolutely loved Cream at the time. I was listening to loads of Cream and Jack Bruce. And I saw a picture of him playing one of these. So this is a reissue. I think my dad got me, bought me this for Christmas around about, must have been like 1999. So it's a while back now. Uh, it's a Dan Electro Longhorn. Really, really cool sounding. Very retro. Lipstick pickups. Um, fun fact. The solo to my generation was originally recorded on one of these, but uh, John Entwistle kept breaking the strings and you couldn't get replacement strings at the time. So uh, they kept having to buy brand new basses and then they ran out. So we recorded it on a jazz bass in the end. That's my Dan Electro Longhorn, Fender P bass. This, should, this is a staple in any bass player's collection, really. This one isn't actually mine. Special mention to Karen, who is the, the woman who originally taught me how to play bass a long time ago. Um, she got this as a present for her 21st birthday. Uh, she doesn't play anymore, so she uh, kind of just permanently let me borrow it. So cheers, Kaz. Next one is a Music Man Stingray. This is a hybrid. So um, before they got, before Ernie Ball bought uh, Music Man as a company, they had a load of spare parts and stuff. So this is a pre-Ernie Ball. This is a pre-Ernie Ball body with an Ernie Ball neck. It's quite rare. Um, if you plugged it in, you would think it sounds like Rage Against the Machine. Loads and loads of clarity. Really top endy. Active as well. So there's a battery in there. It sounds amazing. Really good. Just plugging straight into a desk. This is used a lot on the Kaftan Society. A lot of the, a lot of the tracks. I can't remember which ones are. This is uh this is one of my the pride and joy of my collection. <laughs> Isn't actually owned by me, but you may recognise it recognise it from the Rich Girl video. Um this is actually Ron, the manager's base. It's a nineteen sixty one EBO. Very, very old. This is the latest in my collection. This is a, a Gibson Les Paul DC Tribute Bass. Basically, the story behind it, this shape was the original EBO shape. They used to have a pickup here, just like the EBO. So it kind of evolved into that shape. They only made 500 of these. And uh, to get hold of an original one would cost me a lot of money. So when these came out, I had to get one. Short scale as well, so it's very fast playing. I um, I also got Run the Manager to add a little fun rest on there so I can dig in and play a bit faster. Sounds great. It's got a coil tap so I can get my clarity out of it as well. Scoops the mids. The next one is Neil's favourite. My mandolin. <laughs> I used this on Cold Night. And that, I've only used it on Cold Night, didn't I? Yep, that's the only one. It's got an amazing pickup there. Um, that I got for £5 from Wish.com. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Is my main workhorse. This is my Lakeland Daryl Jones signature. Um, I'm endorsed by Lakeland and I've been using this for about 10 years now. Uh, maybe more actually. But this is the best jazz style bass I've ever played. It's absolutely amazing. It plays like butter and it sounds amazing as well. I am... Um, I bought this with some inheritance money from when my nan passed away. And hence the purple stuff here is from some of the flowers from her funeral. Which just reminds me of why I've got it. Name's Lily. There we go then. So that is all of my guitars. I hope you enjoyed it. See you later.